right. Today we're going well tonight. We're going to talk about turbo shaft speed and how to set it up in Holly EFI. So maybe you got two uh, or single big turbo or whatever, and you wanted to monitor shaft speed. Maybe you got one of these sensors. Well, any turbo shaft speed sensor out there is all going to get set up the same way in Holly. So um, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now um, I first have to give credit to. A friend of mine, Matt Lunsford, he uh, created this calculator a long time ago and uh, shared it with me a long time ago, and it makes life a heck of a lot easier than trying to figure it out without the calculator. So I'm going to link this calculator in the uh, description of the video, so make sure you click on it, and it's a Google Docs, and you can change the number of blades uh, for your turbo, and it'll spit out the, uh, the values that you need, right? So as you change it, notice shaft RPM changes, right? So, let's get into it. Now, why do you want to know turbo shaft speed? Well, uh, it can tell you a lot. It can tell you kind of when you're out of turbo. It can kind of tell you um, when you're about to hurt something. Um, it can tell you uh, if the thing is just at a threshold where it doesn't want to follow the, uh, the boost curve. Um, there's a lot to learn from turbo shaft speed, but the goal for tonight is to teach you how to set it up. So... Here is my turbo driver side turbo shaft speed sensor. It's a speed frequency input. We're going to go to configure. All right. Now, it is a custom frequency, so the type is custom frequency. Our units is RPM. Format is 1. All right. Now, sensor min and max doesn't really matter. Just make them max, like as high as it'll go. So at the bottom, we've got a frequency that the ECU is going to read it at, and transpire the values out to this so you can't see um these values right like you can't see them because the numbers are too big so i'm going to right click i'm going to copy let's come over here to excel and i'm going to paste it there you go so now you can see the full values right so if you compare them right there 16 you know whatever so there we go well, you know what? Let me do it this way and paste it here. All right. Hold on. And paste. There we go. So now you can see the comparison. So if we change the blade number, we'll go to 12. Notice the blade numbers change. So um, I just imported this over to uh, Google Docs. So the link, you'll be able to use it. So what this is, is the frequency. So the bottom scale right down here is right here this is your frequency all right so just leave this same frequency no matter how many blades you have right um so leave that and then go into your google doc here and type in the number of blades that you have and it'll spit out shaft rpm and then what you can do is you can left click hold and drag run it over to here there we go right click copy come back over here left click right click paste bing bang boom paste them in there for you right so here we can do this zero and then paste there you go so there is your turbo shaft speed setup um easy peasy now with this with that said um your minimum reading is going to be 10286 rpm with a wheel now some of you guys are looking at your turbo looking at like watching this video scratching your head going man my turbo only got seven blades wrap your little finger around that thing and you're going to see that it's got um uh, it's got 14 okay it's got an extra blade on the bottom down there so um it is a 14 blade turbo not a seven blade or some of the garrett stuff is 11 blade right um if we shove 11 in there it'll spit out these values so um, and then if you want to do the math, there's the math for you, but you don't have to. So let's look at, here we go. Dry, turbo shaft speed is set up. So here is a run. Let's go all the way back here where we're, before we get on the trans brake. So there's turbo shaft speed, driver side, passenger side. Um, let's make that a different color. Set the color to yellow. There we go. So, 
um, notice it changed the scaling, right? So one five zero 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 zero. There we go. Now notice it's flat, ten thousand two hundred eighty six, because that is the minimum reading it's going to have. It's got zero pounds of boost. Let's light boost up here, right? Let's make that a little bit brighter too. Mm -hmm. Let's do. Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling white. There we go. That's good. All right. So we've got 0 0.3 pounds of boost. And then once this thing starts to light off, we start to see a little bit of RPM, right? And we start making a little bit of boost. There we are. Uh, 9.7 pounds of boost. And it lays flat, 38,000. Now, don't go nitpicking how close these things are to each other in a run. Uh, if they're within like a thousand RPM or something, don't go crazy. Like, Oh, one side of my motor's hurt. One side's not whatever. Um, you got to think it's been in 38,000 RPM. There's a, there's going to be some room for error. So, um, all right. So this is some good data to look at right now. We are on the trans brake. We're right at 9.9 .9 pounds of boost because the targets to leave right at 9.9, 10.0, right? So, and we have made other videos on how to do this, and that's with ignition timing. If you look at ignition timing, you can see it reaches our target there, and it holds it, right, like right there. And uh, it holds it at that 9.9 .9 pounds of boost. Very spot on. Um, it is, it, it's, this is the most reliable way that I've found to leave on the exact amount of boost that you want to. So, here we are, we're at a... Uh, we're at 9.9, 9.8, 9.9 pounds of boost, and we're at 38,785, right around 38,000 RPM, right? Uh, we roll over here, and notice that shaft speed climbs immediately, right? So let's just zoom in here to like there. Let's get rid of ignition timing. All right. So there we are, 38,000-ish, right? And notice that we have a hump here, right? So you see this little hump that's, that's happening here? Um, but notice how boost is flat. We only have 10.1, 10.7, and our target is, uh, you know, somewhere at 15 or something. You know I mean? We want more boost than that, that that early. Now, remember, we're at 0.15 into the run, so you can't get too greedy with this. But, um, but turbo shaft speed is telling me that we're still kind of below the curve, right? These turbos want more boost on the starting line. So... Um, next time out, I'll tinker with some stuff and see what we can accomplish. But if you can see it in boost, you see how it's laying over and then it's, then it's accelerating. The turbos are starting to accelerate here, right? So it lays over, kind of lulls right here and then starts to take off. Well, turbo shaft speed does the same thing, but as it comes in, it comes in pretty abruptly. Now you see shaft speed hit abruptly here and then take a nice gradual long rise all the way out here to 1.8 into the run. Uh, where it tops out. So, right around where it tops out, I should say, 1.9. So, um, we're 72,000 RPM. Let's just look at just one of them, just so it's easier to follow, right? So, there we are, 72,600. Um, but what does boost do? Okay, so this is why turbo shaft speed is pretty cool to, to look at. This is with conventional exhaust wastegates, and I have to harp on that. Um, I'm not doing any more stuff on cold gate um, strictly because y'all have asked me too many times and i just it got so annoying that i just gave up on it and i actually had the charge pipe remade um and uh and and threw it out right might have thrown it out i give it to a buddy of mine but needless to say whatever so what does boost do so notice the turbo shaft speed is very flat out here right notice it's very flat right seventy two thousand ish rpm right so 72, 73,000 RPM. We don't see huge swings in turbo shaft speed. These little drops and rises, they're irrelevant. Um, it's not like the turbo just dropped that, that, that much RPM right there. You know what I mean? And then picked it right up right there. Um, those are, those are irrelevant. So look at this, uh, as a nice flat, a pretty flat line, right? But we've got 43 pounds of, we'll start back here. We got 40 pounds of boost in the motor, right? And we are still on that flat plane. And then 41 pounds. And then here where it peaks, we have 44.6. And then here it drops, we have 41.5. And then out here in high gear, we have 40.5. Right here, this is this is the end of the run right here. Like that, right there is the end of the run. Um, and we got 40.8. So if you look at this 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 uh, 
horizontal line, um, it's perfectly flat. Notice where it intersects out here. It's right where it, so look, end of the run. Dang it. There we go. Let me just zoom out a little bit. There we go. So turbo shaft speed peaks right here and right there. So all that above the curve, right? All that above, what is that about? Well, this is the engine kind of telling you something, right? So if you're, if you're smart enough, you should be able to read what it's trying to tell you. So the boost comes in the motor. And then the lockup turns on here. And I just made a video and uploaded a video about lockups. So you can watch that. You should have already watched that. Um, if you didn't, watch it. Uh, anyway, lockup comes on. It loads the engine hard. A lot of people think that, well, man, when you load the engine hard, it spins the turbo faster. Not exactly true. The engine becomes more efficient. So we're at 6,800 RPM. The engine becomes more efficient. Now, look, we've got 44.6 pounds of boost. We get out here to 8,400 RPM, and we're down to 41.9 pounds of boost. Um, and then we get, you know, we get down here, we have a quick spike in boost because the RPM just dropped, and then we're lulled out here and lugged down from the converter, uh, from the torque converter being locked up in high gear, and boost is starting to taper off because the engine is becoming less and less efficient the higher it revs. Now, what does that tell you? Um, it could tell you guys a lot of different things, but I know what it tells me. And what it tells me is that this thing wants more dome pressure on it to get that shaft speed up when we're in high gear. So without having shaft speed data, um, we could have been up against a wall and just been out of turbo. Uh, max turbo shaft speed on these HPT turbos that I run is, uh, I believe Tristan told me a hundred and hundred and something thousand. Uh, we're not there, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, so we're going to shove a little bit more dome pressure in this thing, see if we can't make a little bit more boost out there in high gear. So the boost curve is going to look a little bit weird, but probably right around after three and a half seconds into the run, it's going to get hit with an extra five to seven pounds of dome pressure to try to maintain that same 40 pounds of boost throughout the rest of the run through the quarter. So um, again, this, uh, this Google Docs thing will be in the description. Let me find it again. And just key in however many blades your turbo has. Make sure you count how many blades you got. And if you can't count from the front, take the compressor cover off and look at it. Um, but shove however many blades you have in there. And then shaft RPM is generated. Whoops. And your frequency is fixed. And you're good to go. So um, hopefully this taught you all something. If you guys... Um, are interested in buying HPT turbos or uh, force induction turbos or uh, turbo shaft speed sensors or any of this kind of stuff. Uh, I need to remind all y'all that I am a dealer for it. We're a dealer here at HCR Innovations. Um, here's our website here. I don't have all the HPT stuff on the uh, on the website yet, but uh, the force induction stuff is on the website. I'll have Laura put the HPT stuff up on the website here ASAP. Um, the HPT turbos come uh, already pre-drilled for a turbo shaft speed sensor and um we can set you up with uh with shaft speed sensors that are already you know fit and ready to go um the force induction stuff um can be drilled and machined for a turbo shaft speed sensor it just adds a little bit of time to your order uh but it can be set up uh when you get it so um yeah let me know if we can help see you